Today in the Internet Things show, we're going to see a very cool demo that uh, Jeremy will present. Uh, Jeremy is from Magnol Miller, and he's been working uh, with this team and the uh, Applied Innovation team at Microsoft, which is part of the Microsoft Digital Group, uh, to create, you'll see, a very interesting uh, demo that illustrates a scenario of smart building management. Yes. This is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host, and uh, we're here in a building on Microsoft campus where actually we, are, we have a lab that is about testing the equipment that goes into the various buildings on campus that are meant mm -hmm. to control the HVAC systems. And I here have uh, Jeremy Richmond with me. And Jeremy, you work for McDonald Miller, right? Yes, so I work for McDonald Miller Facility Solutions. We're a large design build mechanical firm here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, yeah. And we have the largest contingent of service technicians out of any mechanical provider. And so what that means is we try to translate that over into the realm of field service, mm -hmm. is we have people out there taking care of the mechanical equipment that's actually running the buildings that we're in today. Got it. So we're going to see a little demo mm -hmm. of some very cool IoT device like that comes on top of equipment that is already mm -hmm. connected with tons of sensors. Right. So you describe a little what we're going to see in a minute. Um, but in the meantime, like back again to your company, you were saying what, they were, what you were doing, but for people to realize the scale of that, mm -hmm. so how many buildings, how much like square footage uh, does a company like yours manage sure. worldwide? Sure. So we have over 5,000 buildings in our portfolio that we maintain. Okay. So a large scale of those are all in the Pacific Northwest. So when we start talking about Washington, Oregon, Idaho, that's kind of our main service territory that we maintain for. However, when we start talking about this technology that we're going to talk about today, we have customers all over the world that we do this for. Got it. So. And, uh, and, and in terms of scaling, in terms of like how big this is, how much sensors, how much data are you actually dealing with when it comes to a campus like Microsoft's campus or like big buildings like the ones we have here? So there's 20 million records that are scanned every single day at a, at a, a corporation the size of Microsoft. 20 million. 20 million. A day. A day. Okay. So we start talking about all of the sensors, whether it's the lighting sensor in this room or the temperature sensor in that room, all of that data gets pumped up and then is then analyzed. Got it. And so analyze and then you extract some insights from that data mm -hmm. uh, and then you eventually take action, right? Correct. And an action is to be automated, right? Or can be automated in some cases, right? Absolutely. It can definitely, it can be automated. And then as part of resource scheduling, you have technicians who sit into different uh, levels of complexity that their their skill sets are at. Okay. So we can actually take these faults, these these issues that the data is just pulling up for us, mm -hmm. and assign it directly to whoever is available, and whoever has that skill set to address that issue. So basically, you have a clear example of an integration between an IoT application, which is mm -hmm. collecting the sensors data and applying the analytics, Correct. and the line of business application where you manage your teams of maintenance and you actually schedule their 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 daily job and, and things like that, right? Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Okay, let's see how that works. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So over here, um, I have a, a headset from a company called Realware. And this, this headset here that I have connected so that we can uh, get a good view of it, it's called the HMT1 or the head mounted tablet. Okay. And so this application, when we start talking about wearable technologies, mm -hmm. allows us to be completely hands free. And so that's a, a, a cutting edge application for wearables because a lot of them have a lot of buttons on the side. You got to move things up and down, little windows. Um, but this, this device here is completely hands free. Okay. And it is currently integrated to the analytics software that we're using. And that platform is called uh, uh, the Iconics Software Suite okay. from, from uh, Iconics, a corporation out in Boston. Okay. And also, this is integrated to Dynamics Connected Field Service. Okay. So. So basically gives you access to the data in context, right? Because when you see that, mm -hmm. well, basically the operator or the maintenance guy is actually getting access to the data related to the, the, the machine is actually onto and, and all of that in a little tiny yeah, screen. Yeah, all of that right? in a little tiny, tiny little window that pops up here. It's about, it's like having a seven inch tablet about this far from your face Got that it. they can see and just get a digital twin of that, of that equipment. So they can walk up to it, scan a code right on okay. the equipment, 
and then see everything that's going on in real time. And that's in production. It's not just science fiction. Oh, this whatever. is not science this fiction is... at all. This is in production. Okay, let's see if that works. So you have a cable actually allows us to see what's going on right. in there. Correct. And how do you interact with that thing? Sure. So it's all one of the great things about this tool, again, like I was mentioning, is it's all voice activated. Right? Okay. And so the camera, uh, or your, your little window, so mm -hmm. to speak, is uh, reversible. So if you're left eye dominant, Okay. We can flip it around and put mm. it on the left side. Okay. And so the only buttons on here is a power button and a, English, and a language toggle button. Okay. That's it. Those are the only buttons on this. So uh, there's, uh, I believe, 13 different preset languages that are in the device. Okay. That depending on what your primary language is, you just go straight to it and the screen changes in the whole nine yards. Okay. Well, so, let's see. And there's also a little camera. We'll see how Right. How yeah, we yeah we're going to see that right. camera here in just a second. So when we go to thinking about how do we document that we were out there and we did something okay. from a field service aspect, because mm -hmm. that's an important fact for a lot of our customers is they want to know that we showed up, yeah. that we did some work, we can document a repair, mm -hmm. or better yet, if we find another problem, mm -hmm. we can document those problems and now we're actually taking photographic evidence and videos to our customer to say, hey, this belt completely tore apart, and that's why your fan's not working. And because of that, your space is hot. Got so it. we need to replace the belt to get the fan working again, and it's going to cost X amount. Got it. Right? Okay. So it's really great. It's all voice activated. Um, so I'll just go into it and say, you know, my programs. And as we can see, then we start to load up our, our menu behind us here. And then I'm just going to go into uh, mobile HMI. And now... I'm looking at an actual quick snapshot mm -hmm. of the Bellevue Library. So this okay. is King County Libraries. This is an important customer that McDonald Miller services. And this particular site is processed into our analytic environment. Okay. So as part of that, we can see a quick view of issues that are happening real time in that building. And not only the issues, but how much does that issue cost? What is the cost of inaction? Got it, yeah. So you can prioritize exactly. you know, which one you're going to tackle first and, okay, got it. Exactly. And so one way that we can uh, quickly move around in this as we, as a technician gets to a mm -hmm. site, he can look at it and say, okay, uh, load list view. And now as we populate here, we can start to see mm -hmm. uh, the different equipment that's out there and the health of that equipment. I had a quick shot. Now, I'm a technician. I rolled out to a site. I'm just doing standard maintenance. Yeah. So I, I'm, just, I'm there to change filters, and I want to know what else is going on. Mm -hmm. So I can use this application and get a quick view, and I can see that the air handler has a problem. Okay. So I'm going to say load AHU. And so now we can see that piece of equipment mm -hmm. and all of the pertinent details that are around it. So now if I back up to how field service is traditionally done, yeah. if I wanted to know this kind of information, I had to wait for a building engineer to show up, allow me access to their system so we could take a look at it, then go back to that piece of equipment, look at it there, make a change, go back to the other system, see how it responded. And now we can see everything in real time right there at the unit. Got it. So this is one way to navigate throughout the system. But one of the other nice features here is scan code. So remember I told you that we could actually put codes on this equipment. Yeah, yeah. And so if we wanted to get an idea of I'm not, I don't mm -hmm. want to navigate through here. I just want to scan yeah, yeah. to it. Scan code. Now I just need a QR code. And I happen to have one here. Right? All right. There you go. So if I just scan this code, oh. zoom level two. All right, cool. so by scanning that code, now I can take a look at everything that's going on with that piece of equipment. And so if I want to get a little bit of history and see what's been happening, mm -hmm. I can say load faults. And now I have a list of everything that's been happening with that piece of equipment in real time and then what's active right now. And so I can see that I've got uh, some unoccupied set points, meaning that those zones are uh, uh, not operating in the way they should be. 
I can also see I've got failed return fans, which means that I'm not pushing out all of that hot air that's in a building. Cool. That's that's very insightful. And actually, I'm impressed that it's, you're telling me it's all in production. People are using these kind of devices. And so if I see someone actually roaming around in our buildings with that on the head, I'm not going to be freaking out, right? Right. <laughs> and, and one of the great things about this device is if I get to a site and I'm working, I don't have to take this off. I can just roll that back. And now and it's right out of my field of vision. And I can do everything that I need to do with my hands. And I guess it can actually resist like things like rain and other things like that, right? Oh, absolutely. So depending on your application, they have different models. You know, so they actually even have an intrinsically safe model that's for use on like oil platforms. Yeah. So actually, if I have to, some always just seen is an actual smart building mm -hmm. that is actually sending all, t all its data to a, to backend is analyzing all of that. Right. And then we have an integration into line of business application. And in that case, we have a very nice scenario of augmented reality, actually, which uh -huh. is used by operators, maintenance teams to access that data in context next to the devices that they have to maintain and work on. Right. Perfect. It's beautiful. That. It is beautiful. IoT in action, basically, right? Absolutely. So one of the other really cool things here, though, is you know, our access to technical documentation. Mm -hmm. So typically, if I'm in the field, I don't have access to that documentation, right? But when we load all that documentation into the system, yep. we can see it here. So I can very easily just say, show document. Mm -hmm. And now, I'm already coming in, and as I move my head, the document moves behind me. Oh, nice right? feature. So if I can go zoom level one, now I can see the entire document, right? Okay. I can go next page. And so if I'm servicing a piece of equipment and I want to know what my clearances mm -hmm. are, I can see them here. They're, they're, on, they're, they're pretty far away, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go zoom level two. And now I'm going to freeze document. And so now I can move my head again. And you still have it there. And I can still see it all in one spot. Super useful. And all the docs, all the data is managed by the Iconic software in the back end in our case, right? Absolutely. It's all managed by the Iconic software in the back end. So if I just go recent applications, load Iconics, and it comes back. And it's right here. Now it's loaded. Awesome. So there's one thing we forgot to mention, which yeah. is kind of key actually on the IT show. Um, the uh, cloud that backs all of that up is Azure. So it's we're using Azure. Azure IoT services mm -hmm. uh, to gather the data and hook these data up into Iconix for the line of business management of all of that operation. Absolutely. That's all there. And the other component to that is not only is everything running in Azure, mm -hmm. but we're also having this integrated to Dynamics and Connected Field Services, right? Yep, awesome. That's perfect. Uh, and, and the loop is closed, basically. We have everything in there. Absolutely. Cool. That was a super inf insightful demo, Jeremy. Thanks a lot for this one. Uh, thanks for watching the IT Show. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.